Hey guys, back with another unboxing video, and today we have Book of the Month. Again, not really an unboxing because, I mean, you kind of know what you ordered before it even comes. And how do I open this thing? All right, here it is. <laughs> Uh, all right so here is april's book for april's book or april's book of the month i chose um arsenic and adobo adobo i think it's adobo um but it's pretty much like a whodunit and i love whodunit books and movies so and tv shows I actually loved the whodunit tv show and they only gave us one season of that and whatever you know some of us really enjoyed it be nice if you know it came back anywho all right so this book says the first book in a new culinary cozy series ooh Full of sharp humor and delectable dishes, one of which might just be killer. When Lila, mm, we don't know Lila's last name, but when Lila moves back home to recover from a horrible breakup, her life seems to be following all the typical rom-com tropes. She's tasked with saving her Tita's I'm pretty sure this says Tita's. Tita Rose's, Rosie's, sorry, failing restaurant. And she has to deal with a group of matchmaking aunties who shower her with love and judgment. But when a notoriously nasty food critic, who happens to be her ex-boyfriend, drops dead moments after a confrontation with Lila, her life quickly sw swerves from a Nora Ephron, Ephron Rom to an Agatha Christie case when the cops treating her with the cops treating her like she's the one and only suspect and the shady landlord looking to finally kick the Macapagal that's her last name Macapagal family out sorry I'm not saying that right I know I can't be so with the landlord trying to kick her family out and resell the storefront front, Lila's left with no choice but to conduct her own investigation. Armed with nosy aunt network, her barista best bud, and her trusted Dotson Longanisa? Longanisa? Lila so the Dotson's name is Longanisa. Okay. Lila takes on this tasty, twisted case and soon finds her own neck on the chopping block. Whew. Okay, it's only a mouthful because I can't pronounce the, the family last name. Is there a pronunciation key in here? I hope there's a pronunciation key in here. Ooh, boy. There is... N yes, there is one. But... I don't see the last name. Ah! It's a Filipino surname. Macapago. Macapago. Macapago family. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mia. Mia, that's the author's name. Thank you for the pronunciation and uh, glossary guide because there are a lot of books that should have this and they don't. And, how, I mean, how do they expect us not to completely butcher if they don't give us a guide to go by? I mean, I'm, I know I'm, I still probably butchered that, but there's a pronunciation key to help me out. And thank you for that. All right, next book. This is an add-on that was part of last month's choices. And I really wanted to get it, but I got three books last month and could not get all of them. So... Because I'm not part of the book club, so you only get two add-ons. You can't get all five books. Like, if you're part of their book club, you can get all five books. Anywho, I have The Lost Apothecary um, by Sarah Penner. And this book is all over um, YouTube. It is a gorgeous cover. 
Um, so far, nothing but good ratings. I do not read any, uh, or not read, watch any spoiler videos because I don't want to get spoiled. So let's read and see. This says, a forgotten history, a secret secret network of women a legacy of poison and revenge welcome to the lost apothecary hidden in the depths of 18th century london a secret apothecary shop caters to an unusual kind of clientele women are across the city whisper of mysterious of a mysterious figure named nella who sells well digested poisons to use against the oppressive men in their lives Nella's dark world is no place for her newest patron, a precocious 12-year-old girl named Eliza Fanning. But their unexpected bond sparks a string of consequences that echoes through the centuries. 200 years later, aspiring historian Carolina Parswell discovers an age apothecary vial in the River Thames. As she is newly grappling with the searing betrayal of her husband's identity, a curious research project is exactly the distraction Caroline needs. But when she discovers a link between the vial and London's long unsolved apothecary murders, Caroline's appended present soon collides with an explosive history binding her fate to Nella's and Eliza's in a stunning twist that transcends the barrier of time. Okay. All of that. Okay. So this kind of seems pretty cool because it's like mystery, sovereign, solving a mystery, and I like mysteries. So we got a whodunit mystery and a, another whodunit mystery, but more like a murder who done it? Wait, whoa, oh, they're both both murder men. <gasps> I got two murder mysteries. Bam. I'm about that life, you know what I'm saying? Anyway. <laughs> and the card is Mark as Unread. So that's cute. I like this. This kind of reminds me of uh, like an email when you've